Uh, it's done Friday. It's done? Okay. Okay, uh, good afternoon and welcome again to our Mathematics Distinguished Lecture Series. First of all, uh, I would like to extend our gratitude to the Dean of the Faculty of Mathematics and Natural Sciences, ITB, Professor Wahyu Sri Gutomo, for the constant support to this uh, event. And our big welcome to our speaker today, uh, Professor Gang Tiang. He is a professor of mathematics at Peking University, China, and Higgins Professor Emeritus at uh, Princeton University. And he is known for the contributions to the mathematical fields of uh, Kahler geometry, Rothmoff uh, Witten theory, and uh, geometric analysis. And he's a president of a Chinese uh, math society since uh, 2019 up to now. And also he's uh, my best friend. We are also welcome to all of you, uh, all colleagues, students for attending this program. And uh, uh, in this occasion, I would like to mention that the audience here, not only from Indonesia, but also from uh, neighboring, uh, neighboring countries. And ladies and gentlemen, this uh, Mathematics Distinguished Lecture Series is organized by the Department of Mathematics, Faculty of Mathematics and Na Natural Sciences Institute Technology, Bandung. And now uh, this afternoon, we are all uh, very excited and honored to have Professor Gang Tiang with us and his talk will be chaired by Dr. Uh, Danny Hakim. But before uh, I hand it over to Dr. Danny, let us take a group photo uh, for the uh, history. Pa Rudy, can you yes. help me? Yeah. Yes. Okay, hello everyone. Uh, uh, can you please turn on your uh, camera? And I have uh, two pages here. Okay, I will take the, the first page now. One, two, three. Okay. And then the second one. One, two, three. Thank you, everyone. I think that's all. Okay, now I ask uh, Dr. Denny to chair this session. Okay. <clears throat> First, I would like to share the screen. Okay. It works. Okay. Okay. Thank you, um, Pak Edi. Uh, first of all, I would like to introduce the uh, speaker for uh, today's lecture, Professor Gang Tian uh, from Peking University, uh, Beijing, China. Okay, before the introduction, uh, this is the short reminder that uh, we should mute uh, our microphone at all time in the Zoom session. And for the question and answer session, we you you can uh, type your uh, question in the chat section, and I will uh, read the question. And okay, so this is the brief schedule, and. Okay, I will start with the introduction of our uh, speaker from the educational background. Uh, Professor Gang Tian uh, obtained his uh, Bachelor in Science in Mathematics from Nanjing University in 1982 and Master in Mathematics in, from Peking University in 1984. And he, he obtained PhD degree in Mathematics in, uh, from Harvard University in 1988. Uh, the research interests for, of uh, Professor Gang Tian are, among other, uh, differential geometry, geometric analysis, and symplectic geometry. Okay. And uh, Professor Gang Tian has so many positions uh, and start from 1988 as an assistant professor at Princeton University and associate professor at SUNY and associate professor and as well uh, professor of mathematics at current institute of 
mathematics NYU in 1991 till 1992 and 1992 until 1995. And he became the professor of mathematics at MIT in 1995 until 1996, and as well as Simon, professor of mathematics, also at MIT from 1996 until 2006. And then he uh, became the professor of mathematics at Princeton. Princeton University start from 2003 until 2009. And then uh, Chair Higgins, uh, professor of mathematics, at Princeton University from 2009 until 2017, and also uh, a Professor Emeritus with the same uh, chair. And then he, from 1991 up to now, he is a Professor of Mathematics in, at uh, Peking University. Okay. Uh, and then this is the summary of his uh, services and members uh, membership. Uh, he was the Dean of School of Mathematical Science uh, Peking University from 2013 and 2017, as well as uh, vice president of Peking University. And from 2020 until now, president of uh, Chinese Mathematical Society, as well as a member of executive committee of IMU from 2019. And also the deputy director of academic committee of uh, Peking University member of the Committee of National Science Award in China, and from this year, chair of uh, for, for the Tian Yuan Fund of uh, National Science Foundation in China. He is also editor of, of, of uh, many uh, reputable uh, journal, namely Acta Mathematica Sinica, Geometry and Topology, Communication in Contemporary Mathematics, Advance in Mathematics, Anel de la Scuola Normale, and also a geometric and functional analysis. Uh, the uh, fellowships and honors and awards of, of Professor Gangtian is uh, a Sloan uh, Foundation their doctoral dissertation fellowship and also Sloan uh, Research Fellow, and also the Alan Wooderman Award from NSF, National Science Foundation, USA in 1994, and Oswald Febron Prize by AMS in 1996, and also elected to uh, Chinese Academy of Science in 2001, as well as elected to American Academy of Arts and Science. Okay, without uh, further ado, uh, I'd like to give the opportunity to Professor Gangtian to deliver his uh, talk about the Ricci flow and geometrization. Okay. So, okay, I will stop the uh, share screen now. Okay, so this, uh, Professor uh, Gangtian. Okay, and uh, thank you for, for introduction. And uh, can you see the, uh, the screen? Yes. Okay? yes. <laughs> okay, great. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank uh, Danny for uh, comprehensive introduction. And uh, also I want to thank uh, Eddie for invitation. I also thank, uh, I guess, uh, all the people here for attending this uh, uh, lecture. Um, when uh, Eddie invited me uh, some time ago, I thought I was uh, really wants to come to uh, Indonesia to to give a talk in person. Uh, unfortunately, uh, because of a policy, uh, pandemic policy in China, it's uh, difficult for me. Uh, it's not possible for me to go. So I do it online. And also I apologize for being uh, a bit confusion, being a little bit late. I'm sorry for that. So, uh, so today is a, is a general talk. I want to give you a kind of a brief tour of uh, what is the geometrization and uh, what, uh, can, what we can do uh, further uh, with it. Uh, of course, uh, because of time, a shortage of time, I cannot uh, maybe give all the uh, details. So, so I will... Uh, just uh, 
uh, give your uh, give your something, and uh, so that you can can have a feeling what is going on in today's study, current study in uh, geometric analysis and in different geometry. So, so the title, as uh, as already mentioned, the title of my talk is "Rich Flow and Geometrizations." So that's okay. So, so in this talk, so I assume M is an oriented uh, closed manifold of dimension N. And uh, as we know, the manifolds are covered by open sets, which can be regarded uh, uh, as a subset in Euclidean space. And these open sets are glued together by so called transition functions. Okay, so, so, uh, so, so, a lot of uh, some of the analysis I described here, you can only you can just think of them on a on an open space in the Euclidean space. And uh, the typical example of this manifold, for for example, you can say it's a it's a surface in the in the, our space, okay, in the <clears throat> like a round sphere and so on. So so giving a manifold, we can uh, we can uh, give some structure that. So that's uh, the typical structure is a, a Riemannian structure. So 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 this is locally in the local coordinates, namely if you have an open set, which is, can be regarded as a subset in the Euclidean space. So then uh, you can use a, a coordinate as Euclidean space that give you a local coordinate of this uh, manifold. And in this, uh, uh, these coordinates, the metric is simply given by uh, uh, metri matrix value of the functions. And but this, uh, this mat matrix value function is possibly definite. So a metric, remaining metric is uh, nothing but uh, uh, locally uh, a positive, a positive definite matrix value of the function. Okay? So for example, the simplest example is the Euclidean space with the so-called Euclidean metric, the flat metric. So that in that case, this matrix is just identity matrix. Okay? So a less simpler example is the round sphere, which is defined in the Euclidean space Rn plus one, and uh, given by these quadratic equations, uh, x1 squared all the way plus two, and xn plus one squared equal to one, okay? So, so this one has an induced matrix because uh, on the round field, that at each point, you have a tangent space, which is just uh, all the vectors uh, perpendicular to uh, this position vector. And then uh, you can just use the uh, Euclidean matrix to, to restrict to this, uh, this tangent space, you get uh, you get metric on the round sphere, okay, a round sphere. So, okay. So, giving a metric, and the most important environment is this curvature tensor, which measures how space is curved. Okay? So, so this is intrinsic quantity. So sometimes the space. Is uh, it looks like curved, for example, like a surface of cylinder. This is uh, you look like curved, but in terms of it, it's a flat because you can cut along the side and uh, and expand it and become uh, like a plan, part of plan. So so, but the curvature in some space, for example, round field, it has a in terms in, in it's curved. Yeah. It's uh, even if uh, sometimes you cannot see it in the say in the high dimensions, but uh, uh, but the curvature is a, is, a, is a real quantity which measures how space is curved. The curvature is uh, invariant and diffeomorphism. That means uh, it's, uh, it's independent of a uh, choice of coordinates. This is a property. If a curvature has some property, it's uh, independent of choice of coordinates and so on. And, uh, and on the other hand, it can be expressed in terms of a uh, first two derivative of uh, a metric tensor. That is uh, that metric value of functions I mentioned on a previous page. So, so you can express the curvature in terms of second derivative. Though the formula is a, is a bit complicated, and uh, it's uh, I mean sometimes it's useful, but uh, it does not uh, really tell you. Uh, uh, it's it hard to, hard to extend, uh, uh, hard to extract uh, this uh, property, uh, geometric property, from uh, just looking at these uh, uh, formulas. Okay? 
So for example, for Euclidean space with the Euclidean matrix, the curvature vanishes, it's a flat. Okay, so that's why you can see the Euclidean space. On the, for example, angle two is just a piece of uh, plane, right? It's just a plane. While for Sn, we surround the matrix and the curvature is constant after the curvature is one. It's not uh, zero. Okay, so you cannot, uh, you, you, no matter how you, you, you do it, you cannot, uh, I, uh, you cannot, uh, cannot uh, press it, the sphere to a, to a plan without the cracking, uh, without the breaking. Okay. So giving a manifold, there are infinitely many Riemannian metrics. So it's hard, hard to use a general metric to study a geometry of the topology of a space. Okay. So, so there are, uh, I mean, what's good about the metric? You, you say, if once, once you have a metric, you can, you can, you can consider uh, uh, distance of uh, uh, you can have distance between points. You can compute length of a curve. You can compute the area of a domain and so on. Okay, but it's uh, it's still there are infinitely many possibilities. So by the way, it's a uh, it's a uh, actually the metric exists in our nature because uh, for example because of gravity, uh, our space is curved, right? Uh, general relativity tells us the space is curved and uh, and uh, the, the gravity is actually just a metric in, 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 in. So, so, but there are many ways of uh, many curved spaces, and uh, so there are many uh, infinite many uh, many metrics. So this leads to a geometrization. So geometrization simply means uh, we want to, um, well, we want to usually means to find the metric on M with a good curvature properties. Okay. So most of the time we want this metric is has some homogeneity, for, for example, as as we are seeing in the moment. Okay, so it's like a homogeneous the curvature is constant, and these are, 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 are like a, a better uh, better metric with uh, nice properties. So let me start with the case angle two. So 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 then the M is the surface, right? So now curvature is, uh, so this time the curvature is, is, is determined by a function, say a t, referred as a Gauss curvature. Or sometimes you take a twice of this t, which you get a scalar curvature. So anyway, it's, uh, in, in a two-dimensional case, curvature is, uh, is, uh, is determined by functions. Okay. So, so see, what is the simplest condition on a function is, I mean, you can make a guess, right? The naive way is to make it a constant. The classical theorem tells us if M admits a metric of constant curvature, then the universal cover of M is either S2 or R2 and H2. So that's, that's, that's tell, tells you how, how lies in the, if a metric has a curvature constant, right? Because uh, if a curvature constant, you can, you can up to a fundamental group, you basically can classify this. Uh, and the space, uh, no matter what uh, space you start with, and uh, no matter uh, what knowledge you can have a priori. Okay? So, so, so then we come to a question: How do we construct a metric with constant curvature? So, in some sense, the geometrization of a of a surface of a or two-dimensional space is to find a metric with constant curvature. Okay? And this has many ways, and actually has quite a few ways. In college, many uh, people here, I guess, uh, known the complex analysis and knew the complex analysis. So in complex analysis, there's a Riemann mapping theorem. That tells you uh, any Riemann surface, the universal power is either S2 or R2 or unit disk. The unit disk is actually the same as uh, a hyperbolic two space. But uh, what I want to do here is uh, is to do it in a, in a, in a, in terms of a metric, in terms of a differential geometry. Okay, so that we can do it in in other cases. So, 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 so this case thinks uh, you think uh, if a, if a curvature is just a function, in order to make a curvature to be a constant, what you can think maybe you simply change your metric by uh, by conformal change. That, that means you 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 if you start with some giving metric which you pick up uh, and 
today we have a city audience here and each people may pick up a different uh, G0, but it doesn't matter. So then what we, we want to do is uh, we want to get a new matchup, which is of this form is uh, E22U two, two times G0, okay? And uh, so, so this is conformal change. So, so these two matchups has a, uh, why do we con conformal change? Because uh, you will find uh, uh, in these two metrics, if the two metrics are connected this way, uh, we compute the, the, the giving a giving a two tangent vector giving point. The angle between them is the same for both metrics. Okay, so 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 then, uh, but we want to what we want to get a new metric, and uh, this new metric has a constant curvature. Okay, so this is same as to solving a, a equation. So, so it's quite easy to get this equation simply because you can, as I said before, giving a giving a, a metric, you can compute the curvature in terms of derivatives. Okay, and uh, the k zero is a is a curve Gauss curvature of g zero, and uh, and the k is a Gauss curvature of uh, g. And we want to, uh, I want the k to be a constant this time. Like k zero may not be constant, and this equation may be maybe are uh, different, right? Because uh, if you choose different T0, you get a different K0, you have a different Laplacian operator. Uh, Laplacian operator all depends on T0, but uh, you get a different equation. But whatever you do, if you can solve this equation, in the end, you will get the same G, okay? You will even have 30 people here, we choose a 30 different T0, but in the end, we get the same G and, uh, by solving this equation, okay? So, so it turns out this problem has been studied, has a long history. It's, a, it's a probably some of people in the audience uh, and, and knew it very well and uh, work, has, has worked on this. And, uh, and this, uh, is, uh, some, this is an equation studied uh, since the late 60s. So the equation can be solved due to a work of Louis Nuremberg and, and, uh, and many other mathematicians. So any so so what's the conclusion? Conclu conclusion is is a, I'm sorry, there's a misprint here. Any closed surface can be generalized. Namely, you can solve the equation, uh, and uh, you get a metric of a constant curvature k, constant curvature k. Okay. So 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 then, as you as I already said a moment ago, so then uh, this uh, this uh, um, and the surface is uh, the you know, also cover of the surface is either S2 or H2 or disk, which is a hyperbolic space. Okay, so 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 this way uh, we 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 get the same conclusion as the Riemann mapping theorem told us, and but this time we are we doing this by solving a bunch of different equations. And uh, what is also good about in this approach is uh, a priori. We don't need to know anything geometric information of M. Okay, so just giving a space M and giving a the G zero. Okay, so then we try to solve equation. And in the end, you find the M cannot be. You find the M and is a quotient of a, of some standard space. Okay, so this approach is a, is like a, you can say really analysis. Solves the problem of a geometry and topology, but the, of course I said the two-dimensional case there are different approaches, uh, but this is the approach we want to adapt to a high dimensions. Okay, so how about your high dimensions? Okay, the high dimension the curvature tensor has more components. Okay, so we have to consider more complicated uh, Einstein equations. Okay, so so in two dimension is one or, or, uh, is uh, just a function that that's much, much make life easier. But in high dimension, you have more components because there are different directions. For example, and the curvature we uh, in the, in in this uh, uh, college geometry course, different geometry course, we learned there's a sectional curvature, right? Now, but in high dimension, there are uh, for each. For each two-dimensional plane in the tangent space, you have a we have a sectional curvature uh, in that in that plane. So, but now in high dimension you have a you have many two-dimensional planes. Okay, so you have many sectional many 
secular curvatures. So, so there are many components. The Einstein equation is given by Ricci curvature, which is only part of the curvature, it's not the full curvature. So in local coding as this, uh, it is given by symmetric metric value functions. So this is n by n symmetric metric value function. So this is uh, and has the same number of components entries as a, as a metric tensor. Okay. So, so what's the meaning of Ricci curvature? The rich curvature measures the deviation of volume form from a Euclidean one. So I give you an illustration how this rich curve can be defined. Okay, and uh, this usually is a theorem in the, for example, in Docamo's book or in some uh, standard differential geometry book. But you can also use this as a definition, uh, can as a definition uh, as a way of defining a rich curvature. So what you can do, you you pick up a fixed point p. Okay, you look at the nearby point. Suppose this point X is uh, so close to a P, very, very, very close to P, okay? And uh, then you join them by, uh, by geodesic or by, uh, by a curve, which has the shortest distance from a P to X, okay? It's possible. Of course, in the Euclidean space, that's nine sigma, but in the curved space, it's a, it may not be nine sigma, okay? So, so V is a ten, unit tangent of this, uh, Short is the geodesic, okay? So, so R is the distance, is a, is a small. So then you compute the volume form of uh, this metric at the point X, okay? And because space is curved, the volume form at this point may be different from a volume form at that point, given point, which I denoted by G, dv0. You, you can think that's a Euclidean metric if I fix this point as, a, as my reference point. Okay. So, so then you look at the deviation of this one inform at this point from a one inform at the at the initial point. So you will find this extension here. You will find this extension here. Okay. And uh, this is a rich curvature in this uh, unit directions. Unit direction. Since the rich curvature, as I said, is uh, is given by symmetric tensor. If you if you know the all the values in any tangent in, in any unit directions. You, you know the rich curvature at the, this point in, in, as a matrix, okay? So this is a, a property of a, of a, of a matrix, okay? Of a symmetric matrix, okay? So, so that's a rich curvature. So now we consider uh, um, my uh, first part of my, my talk and the title of my talk. We consider the rich curvature into um, and the rich flow. So, so, and uh, which was introduced by Hamilton in early 80s. So this is the evolution equation. So namely we can say the, uh, we pick up a given metric as an initial one. And we can, we can say the, a family of a matrix parameter by T and uh, they, they, they evolve in the direction of a minus two Ricci curvature. So this is a component of Ricci curvature, okay? So, so why we, we want to use a Ricci flow? Because as I said, um, there are many metrics on a given space. We want to find uh, one with a good properties. We hope Ricci culture where can, can, can fulfill this, uh, uh, this, uh, this uh, task, okay? So, so this is a kind of parabolic equation so evolution equation. So 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 as we know, for any initial metric, there's a unique solution T T on a, on 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 some uh, on some on a manifold across some interval time time interval. Okay. So this uh, by uh, I mean the top and I mean I'm to give a very complicated proof using a less you uh, check and then later on uh, the top found a, uh, a simpler proof, much simpler proof, and uh, the reason. For at the beginning, it's difficult because this is not exactly parabolic, and uh, and because both metric and the rich curvature are invariant and the diffeomorphisms, so so this is only weakly parabolic. Okay. So we need to some uh, check to do that. But this is uh, known for uh, nearly forty years. Okay. So so what's Bad things about, I just told you some good things. There's a local existence, and it's a nice equation, and, uh, but it's nonlinear. So in local coordinates, if I choose a local coordinate that satisfies uh, this condition, this so-called harmonic coordinates, 
then you can compute, you can see uh, this uh, uh, Rishi, Rishi flow becomes like this. Okay, so this is some quadratic term. And this you can see is nonlinear. And also this Laplace depends on G. But uh, besides that, you can see uh, this is essentially like a parabolic equation, like a heat equation. So it's like a nonlinear version of, of, a, of a nonlinear version of a heat equation. Okay. So as we know in the PDE book, linear PDE book, the heat equation has a role if you put the heat source at one point and with time going, and this uh, heating will distribute equally uh, in, the, in the room or in the space okay? and become homogeneous. And this is uh, uh, called the diffusion process. And this equation has the same role. We hope this, uh, this uh, rich flow also diffuse the curvature tensor and make it more and more homogeneous uh, uh, on, on the space. Okay? So, so now let me reconsider the case of a surface. Even though I said in a, in a, in a, because today I want to just tell you ideals, I spend a little bit more time on the surface, which is uh, uh, technically easier. Okay. So, 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 even though I told you before, the, the Nirenberg and the, and his group, already solved that uh, equation, get the generalization of surface. Okay? They did it by elliptic method, uh, by a uh, variational method, okay? by uh, characters of variations and so on. And, uh, and, uh, but in the, in the 80s, when the Rich flow introduced, and the one test is, uh, you can you use a Rich flow to re redo that process? Okay? And, uh, and if you can do, then maybe you can hope the same thing can be done in high dimensions. So that's a that's a uh, that's what the people did in the late eighties. Okay. So 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 what you do is you you can in, as I said the rich curvature is uh, uh, the curvature in two dimensions is given by Gauss curvature or or scalar curvature and so so you can write the rich curvature in this way and then uh, if you change your uh, metric conformally you will get like this you will get like this uh, rich will become the semi linear equations. Okay. So this time it's a two dimension where very special become a scalar equation and uh, it's easier to solve. Okay. And this then. Uh, so by reparameterizing your time and shifting you by some constant, uh, which is uh, which is just uh, just the equivalent way of uh, uh, doing an uh, equivalent way of uh, this and uh, uh, expressing a previous uh, this equation here, this equation here. So you will get a new equation. This is equal to previous flow, but, uh, but this time you, you, you have actual constant here. And this constant may depends on R, but it actually it's a, uh, may depends on T, but, uh, uh, but in fact, the uh, cost of relation tells us uh, this, is, uh, this is a fixed uh, independent T. This is called a normalized rich flow. And this process you can do for, for all the dimensions. Okay, for all the dimensions. So I just want to, um, maybe you don't even know, know the, the, all the, remember all the details, but you, you can, the uh, only thing you remember is uh, there's a rich flow and there's a normalized rich flow. These two flows are completely equivalent to each other. Okay. So, but um, after normalization, this rich flow has uh, at least a global solution. By that I mean uh, for all the T, for all the big equal to zero, you this this flow, the, the solution is this. Okay, so then as a t goes to infinity, this uh, conformal change of this converges to metric of constant curvature. Constant curvature. Okay. So 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 this is uh, in the late eighties, first by uh, Hamilton and uh, some assumptions, and so and so then the uh, Bencho. Uh, who is a professor at the UCSD now, he removed these uh, actual conditions, okay? And uh, in the, uh, after a couple of years. And uh, then uh, uh, still there is a, 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 a small question, which says, because in uh, Hamilton's proof, he assumed that for the, uh, to prove a final limit has a constant curvature. 
he 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 used the property, and uh, if a curvature positive underlying space is sphere, and uh, that's that's uh, does not seem to be very good for for generalization uh, applications. So so in a uh, uh, in, in a only this uh, after uh, some time, so we I uh, we we noticed that this. Uh, 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 wrote a very short paper, so it's uh, you don't need to make that assumption. Okay, you can make a, uh, you can um, uh, realize geometrization of a surfaces uh, completely by Ricci flow or uh, purely by Ricci flow. Okay, you don't need to appeal to any other known results. So this, uh, so to let me conclude, let me just uh, repeat the conclusion. The conclusion is. Uh, you start with any Ricci flow, you start with any initial metric G0, and, uh, and uh, then you do a conformal change, and you normalize, you get a solution for all the time, and you can prove then the normalized uh, uh, solution converge to a metric of constant curvature. Then you know the manifold is nice, okay? Manifold is classified and so on. It's classified up to fundamental groups. So that's a conclusion. Uh, that's a topological consequence. Okay, and as I said before, this consequence can be also uh, proved by complex analysis and so on. But that in that case, you need to, in somehow you you know the geometry of a uh, of a uh, manifold already. Okay, so and this approach I describe here is only depends on this uh, uh, analysis and by solving a PDE or some differential geometrical methods. Okay. So now let's uh, assume uh, this uh, go to high dimension. Or go to high high dimension. There are basically two cases we can uh, try to extend what we knew about the surfaces, okay, and uh, without any curvature conditions, and or you add some curvature conditions, and uh, and uh, you you get uh, you 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 can um, prove a beautiful things, and uh, now we are mentioned later. So if I assume M is a compact three manifold, close to three manifold, so then the static solution of Ricci flow are given by Einstein equations. The static means uh, you want to have a solution which does not depend on uh, time, okay, or depend on time in a in a very simple way. So this will get uh, you get uh, this uh, uh, Einstein equations. Okay? So 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 we also know if for uh, M. In dimension three, if M admits any symmetry, then its universal covering is of the form like this. Okay, so again, the universal cover. Sorry, no, no gamma here. Okay, is a S three or R three or H three or so uh, this H three hyper hyperbolic three space. Okay. So then the question is, does M admit the Einstein metric? Okay, as we did in two dimension. Okay, in two dimension we know every any surface admit the Einstein metric because it's uh, just a metric of constant curvature. Okay, but uh, in high dimension, uh, it turns out it's not. It's not. It's even in uh, three dimension. So Solstein's geometrization conjecture states any three manifold can be decomposed in a natural way into a uh, this Einstein space and the uh, three manifold plus some graph manifolds, which I will, will not uh, describe here. So, 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 called geometrization because uh, each of these pieces, the Einstein piece is, uh, is of a constant curvature and uh, the sectional curvature, and all these pieces, this, uh, this three manifold plus some graph manifold, these are. Uh, all have a homogeneous structure, and um, okay, the system and classify them. There are only eight kinds of geometry, and if you can prove this, even 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 if I stated in a very rough way, but uh, but actually, uh, once you can prove this, you can you can you can deduce, you can do, and you can also prove this. Each of these pieces has a has a has a geometric structure, has a geometrization. Namely, it's a homogeneous. Okay. So, Pangori conjecture is, uh, is simply the case when M is simply connected. Okay. 
Of course, we know now the paramount of this conjecture by using a rich flow, okay, using a rich flow. So, so um, I only um, we are uh, see a little bit, and uh, um, it it has a long story. Okay, I think uh, long story. I mentioned uh, some key points in the things, and uh, so that you to give you some uh, impression. What well, what is the key things in the, in this Fermat's approach? So so like in the two dimensions, if uh, uh, the, if a rich flow has a global solution, maybe after after normalization, right after normalization, and this is true in in two dimensions, and uh, and if uh, if this global solution converges to a, a smooth metric, as t goes to infinity. Then we know, so this is the condition. There are two conditions here, okay? The one is uh, has a global solution. Other condition is this global, global solution has a limit. Then uh, it's a limit metric, G infinity is an instant metric. So the universal covering of M is a standard. Then it's either S3 or R3 or H or hyperbolic three space, okay? So this is, uh, uh, so this is like, now we know since uh, since I already said, not every three manifold uh, admits an uh, instant matrix. So 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 then it says uh, you cannot have these uh, both these properties. You, so like the global solutions or has a limit. Okay. So this cannot be true. Cannot be true. These two conditions cannot be fulfilled. Okay. So so one successful example is due to hundred and twenty years ago. Actually, I'm teaching a class in Peking University now, and uh, uh, on the rich flow. So, so, so in the end, uh, we are we are talking about the Hamiltonian theorem. Too. And it's a beautiful theorem. So, theorem says uh, if you if you assume the initial matter has a positive rich curvature, okay, it's not arbitrary, okay, and so then the rich flow has a global solution, and after scanning, which converts to smooth to a matter of constant positive curvature. Okay. And these two things can be realized if you assume an initial metric has a positive rich curve. Okay. Then you ask where, what, uh, is that possible to find a metric with positive rich curvature? Of course not, right? Because this theorem already tells you it cannot, because uh, if it's not, if, if it's true, then uh, this, speed, this metric admits a metric of constant positive curvature. That means uh, it's the universal cover has to be S3, has to be round sphere. So that's not possible because uh, uh, tori, three dimensional tori, right? it's universal cover, it cannot be a sphere, right? It cannot, uh, does not support a positive coach. Okay, so this uh, initial condition is, uh, is, is a real constraint, it's a real constraint, okay? So, 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 so this theorem is a beautiful thing was proved in the 80s, early 80s. Okay, that makes the rich flow um, promising, and many people were attracted to a rich flow. Okay, so so however, rich flow develops singularity at a finite time. So namely, uh, you cannot solve that solution, the evolution equation, all the time, even after normalizations. Okay, so it it has singularities, has singularity. Yeah, well, we know. The singularity is uh, is uh, is quite common for nonlinear equations, right? And uh, and uh, and uh, even though we call them singularity, actually this sometimes is a good thing because without singularities, the knife become too too flat, okay, too too smooth, right? So no challenge, right? No challenge. So so the singularity can be either so the rich for, for rich flow. The singularity can be either forced by topology or caused by complexity in the metric behavior, even if the manifold has a simple topology. Even if you have a, for example, the manifold you know is already S3, but the initial metric has a very complicated uh, geometry, okay? And uh, maybe some parts are negative and some parts are positive, and uh, then you run the rich flow. Uh, may, you, you, you may still encounter finite time singularities. So, so left singularity, this, uh, this singularity, second case, uh, 
can 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 occur along the proper subsets of manifold, not the entire manifold. And this is actually the case we need to understand. We need to understand. So so because of singularity, one is led to to a more general evolution process called Ricci flow with surgery, which was, was first introduced by Hamilton for four, four manifolds with a possible isotropical coverage. So, so namely like uh, uh, we, uh, we, when we solve the equations or nonlinear equations, if we, we, we do not have a, uh, we cannot find a smooth solution, we find a weak solution. So this in some sense is a weak solution. But this is a nice weak solution. We because for geometric applications, we cannot have a two weak solution. We want to have a weak solution, but we still want to understand uh, what what the singularity is. So 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 maybe I uh, uh, drop this. Okay, and so 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 the evolution equation is still parameterized by interval in time, so that for each time in the interval of definition, there is a compact three manifold there is a discrete set of time for which a manifold and metric undergo a topological and the metric discontinuity, so-called surgery. Okay. In each of the complementary intervals to the singular time, the evolution is the usual ratio flow. So the topological type of this underlying space changes as T moves from one complementary interval to the next. So, so what uh, we uh, uh, reach for the surgery is uh, simply you can, uh, in the timeline, you divide timeline into intervals, okay? And the, on each interval is just a standard reach flow, but maybe on the different space. And when you cross the from one interval to another interval, you, 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 you have to do a surgery, okay? So, so, so to be useful, one needs to control both topology and the geometry of surgery process at a single time. For example, it's crucial for topological applications that we do a surgery along the two scales, a rather surface of higher genus. The surgery along the two scales produces a connected sum decomposition, which is well understood topologically, while the surgery along the tori can completely destroy the topology, changing any three manifold into any other. Okay. So, so what I want to see here, the key point, you want the one you want encounter finite time singularity, and you need to know topology at a singular when you do a surgery is only along the two sphere, along the two sphere. Okay. So that's what the paramount breaks through. The paramount proved uh, in amazing way that when this to do a surgery only along the two spheres, and the change in the topology can be completely understood. Completely understood topology. So that is more precise what we, we did. Maybe I drop this. Okay. So basically, you construct uh, some uh, uh, ratio flow uh, with surgery, and uh, and uh, and from when you when you you do a surgery and you know the manifold afterwards from the manifold before the surgery. Okay. So so the, so this way you get so. So to prove the primary conjecture, you can sketch the proof of following result by using a minimum uh, minimum surfaces and so on. Okay, so 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 maybe I I drop that. Okay, so so this is uh, an, 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 uh, there are two proofs of this. Apparently, to prove primary conjecture, a sketchy proof with a pi minimax principle to pass or minimizing this. Study of variation of minimax along the flow flow. Okay. So so he also used a uh, mean curve flow for boundary curves. So so he he's uh, uh, proof only three pages, uh, seven pages, and uh, and uh, in terms uh, so in terms of you need to fill in uh, many more details. And uh, that was done in my book with John Morgan, and uh, and the alternative approach was given by coding the mini process using a. Uh, Harmonic of two spheres. Okay, yes, uh, and uh, also really uh, need to use minimax principles. Okay, to to prove a certain geometrization study a similar behavior for above which flow with surgery to finish approving a geometrization conjecture, Tama used the result on collapsing three manifolds with curvature no locally bounded from below and the geometric convex boundary. So a detailed proof was also given my. Uh, in my second book with John Morgan. 
and the other proof were given by the Klein Lord, Klein Lord and the Chiyo Yamaguchi. Okay. So, so, but I, uh, but uh, uh, before I, uh, I also like to mention that Richard Baumler, who is a professor at uh, UC Berkeley now, my former student uh, from Princeton, he has proved a much stronger version of generalization conjecture. Okay. So, so, so this, by saying this, I want to compare this to a two-dimensional case, give you a good feeling of two-dimensional case. So, so, so if you remember in the two-dimensional case, what we do is uh, we start with any surface, uh, any metric, we run the Ricci flow, and, in, uh, and maybe after normalization, we get, uh, we get a limit metric, which has a constant curvature. So, so, so if we want to do this for three manifolds, okay, so without using any topological results, so that's the main step on this page we describe. I call the refined geometrization from three manifolds. Okay, the source the original one is, uh, is only he only he satisfies um, if uh, top topology is well understood. Okay, what the paramount proof is the topolog to uh, is topological in the topological understanding. Okay, but if we want to do a purely different geometry, there are still some uh, questions. Okay, so 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 let me say uh, I describe it. At any close three manifold for any initial metric G0, and uh, there's a unique Ricci flow with surgery and uh, satisfying this. There are many fight and many surgery. So, th again, this is uh, something more than what the Perman did. Perman didn't prove uh, there are only finite and many surgery. Uh, he proved uh, at, 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 in any finite. Finite intervals, there are only finite many intervals, but there are maybe still infinite many surgeries when your time goes to infinity. Okay. So, so the GT is a, a becomes a classical solution when T uh, bigger to T zero. So classical solution means that it's just a ratio flow on a fixed manifold, fixed space. Okay. Now either GT become extinct at finite time, that's like case of Hungary conjecture. That means uh, the space can't can shrink to a point or after pro uh, proper scanning, GT converted to a finite set of canonical metrics. So this is like a generalization. So each of these space is a, is a homogeneous space in uh, eight time, in eight times, and uh, which was described by Sosten in his uh, early works, okay? So the Sosten has, has completely described, classified eight, eight geometry for Three manifolds, and uh, this is uh, what we want. So I am not going to space next. Okay. So also know the prime factor, which are next sketches. So 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 uniqueness. So let me mention some recent things. Uh, what? Okay. Under this, I mean not. Uh, well, I just want to um, assure you. After Parma, there's still some work to do. Okay, and still some very important work to do. So, so the units of GT is uh, and is 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 the amount of proving any finite of surgery is canonical. Okay, so 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 why I said here is a unique solution. Okay, Ricci flow with surgery. Okay, namely even even if at surgery time the solution GT has a different underlying space from the previous interval. But I want this uh, to be unique. unique. Uh, even if the, you are at the surgery time, your metric uh, jumps, uh, metric across some singularities, but uh, still the, the metric uh, after singularity is uniquely determined by uh, metric before singularities. Okay, so, so, so this is uh, 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 like a proof uh, finite times the surgery is canonical. Okay, it's, uh, you, 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 you want to establish some uh, model for that. And this is still an open problem. And, uh, and so Perma only proves this is topological canonical, okay? Namely, any finite time surgery is always uh, done along the two spheres, but we do not know if it is geometrically weak, okay? So this is uh, uh, 
So uh, something we uh, we still it's a still open question. Okay, uh, there are some uh, works, some uh, models for five time singularity, and uh, due to a work of the Danoff and so on, but still it's a uh, uh, it's open. It's open. So 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 this is like uh, let me make a comparison. For example, in an uh, ordinary differential equation, or uh, we, we know there's a theorem. We solve the, we solve the equation, we know a, so, a solution is a continuous depends on initial values, the initial point, right? So that's because you need that's a fundamental, this is fundamental theorem in the actual ordinary different equations. So, so we hope the same is true for this rich flow research, uh, same phenomenon is true for, uh, for rich flow research. So recently, the Baumler and the Kleiner had found a, a way of constructing rich flow research, which depends on initial value continuously. Okay? So this means that there's a unique rich flow research for any fixed initial value. And this solved the part one in some sense, but they, 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 they didn't, they haven't concluded, haven't proved. This any finite time center is uh, is cannot. So 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 their construction is uh, is uh, quite complicated and uh, lengthy and uh, so 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 that's it. So however, in a surprisingly bomber approved, there are only finite many surgeries was rich flow with surgery with surgery when the parama uh, constructed. And the, the curvature of GT is bounded by this for T subunit knot. And this results of Berman should imply after probably the time the scanning GT converted to a canonical matrix. Canonical matrix. Okay. So uh, this few pages basically I want to say uh, this refined geometrization was three manifold. Or we is almost essentially done except this uh, uh, finite time surgery. Where the final time surgery is cannot or not. Okay, so otherwise it's uh, it's done. Okay, and uh, and I also want to mention uh, this uh, Baumler and uh, Kleiner. They they prove these things and say they they think some weak sense completely solve the previous conjecture. And uh, there is application. They using this they prove uh, they prove they solve the this uh, uh, generalized uh, smell conjecture. The general smell conjecture says uh, uh, a smell conjecture says that if uh, it's a uh, uh, S three, the diffeomorphism group is homotopically equivalent to a uh, S O four. Okay, and uh, and they want to do it for any three other three manifold. There's a question. Sorry, I just remind the audience if they have a question, then they can type it. Okay, please Thank continue. You. Sorry. Okay, thank you, Danny. Okay. Okay. So, how about in even more high dimension? So, so if an initial metro satisfies strong curvature conditions, such as a positive curvature operator or isotropic positive curvature, then this curvature condition is preserved along the Ricci flow. There are a lot of work. Then we can use the rich flow to prove a very important geometric theorems, such as the characterization of space with positive curvature. That was uh, by Baumer and Wilkie. And the quarter pinching theorem, which was proved by Brando and Schum, and the generalized uh, Frank conjecture, and uh, proved by Mock, and uh, also uh, more geometrical proof by. Uh, and Chen and myself. Okay, so so in high dimensions, and uh, uh, the and the rich culture does not uh, uh, determine every culture tensor. So so it's a weaker condition, and uh, it's uh, it's uh, it's not clear how to use the rich flow to classify high dimensional space unless you put some uh, initial conditions on the curve on a, on a metric on a metric. Okay. So, so one possible condition is, uh, is, uh, is uh, when the initial matter has a positive curvature, uh, has a certain, has a curvature in positive in certain sense. Okay. 
So, so, so also there's a, uh, I want to mention there's a, but uh, uh, last year, there, uh, after even that I mentioned it before, it's uh, in four dimension, rich blue may still have a uh, one very important topological application, at least as a potential of uh, doing that. Uh, namely to prove uh, so-called uh, 11 x conjecture. Okay? So, so if you can understand the Ricci flow in four dimension well enough, you can prove uh, uh, this, uh, uh, you can have a topological uh, implication. Uh, that specially implies the manifold with uh, simply, connect, simply connected uh, uh, spin for manifold uh, its inter intersecting form can be completely classified. Okay, so so uh, I I believe uh, Baumler is uh, is uh, uh, has made uh, uh, very good progress. He actually last year he, he proposed uh, he, he posted uh, three non papers uh, uh, about uh, uh, this uh, regularity theory of uh, of ratio for in high dimensions. It's uh, in particular in four dimension. So I think uh, uh, there's a uh, uh, hope for that. So, so another way um, um, to extend uh, um, these uh, two dimension things to high dimensions, uh, if one does not impose any closure condition, um, what we can do is we, we, we can impose a type of a matrix. I only want to mention it a little briefly. So, so this is we consider a space of uh, with uh, with actual structures. Okay, so we call the Keller manifold. So this is a uh, um, first. This is a complex manifold. So namely, locally is covered by by holomorphic coordinates uh, by open sets, which is open sets in the in the CN. Okay, and then the transition function are given by holomorphic functions. Okay, so. And in the local coordinate, holomorphic coordinates, this uh, metric is given by a uh, permission positive metric value functions. So that's a, that's a, it's a more restricted than a, a more restricted than a, this Riemannian matrix. So Riemannian metric locally is given by a positive definite uh, metric value function. Now we we want to be is a Hermitian positive. Uh, it's a Hermitian, the Hermitian metric. So and uh, and moreover. I mean, that's, if this is only Hermitian positive, that's uh, still uh, too, too general, okay? And we impose another condition, let's say uh, this, uh, this uh, uh, is closed, uh, is, uh, this uh, two form is closed. So this condition simply means, this condition called red line simply means, Taylor means uh, locally, these matrix value functions even is, is given by a uh, DD bar derivative of uh, Function. Okay, so locally, kind of metric is determined by one functions. Okay, we cannot. Uh, there are still many infinite many kind of metrics, and uh, they don't have a. Uh, you cannot really say they are curvature positive or not, but the the they still mm, has uh, this uh, some nice property. So so what one good property is rich flow preserve the Kellerian condition. So. If a metric initial metric is of this has these properties, then the, the, the solution along the rich flow all have these properties. So using the rich flow, I initially had worked on uh, together with my collaborator on so-called analytic minimal model program. So this involves two parts. It's, it's very similar to a, a two-dimensional case or a very similar to three-dimensional case. It's the first we want to understand five times similarities construct a global solution with surgery, okay? And uh, then we show such a solution converted to a canonical Keller metric on a, on a certain canonical models, and such a canonical metric include the Keller Einstein metrics. So this is, a, uh, this is a, like a geometrization for Keller metrics, but we call the analytical minimal model program because uh, there is a minimal model program in the algebraic geometry, which want to achieve uh, same goal, but for but for algebraic manifold, right? which is uh, of course uh, kind of uh, algebraic manifold are kind of manifolds, but the uh, kind of man they are more kind of man manifolds than algebraic manifolds. So that's why, and we also do it. Uh, so this is 
So, so I only want to mention uh, uh, one theory, which that tells you how nice the Keller rich flow can uh, behave. So Keller rich flow is simply the rich flow on a Keller matrix. Okay, I should just say. Uh, for example, we have this uh, short local short local existence cell given by John myself and John Joe uh, in uh, uh, fifteen years ago. John Joe now is a is a professor at the uh, at the uh, at the university, okay. and the rich flow has unique maximum solution up to this time, and the t is a maximum of t such that they so this generalize the uh, uh, previous results. Okay, so 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 anyway, so um, I think this is the only thing I want to say about this analytic minimum model program. So, but if a first chunk class is not definite, and uh, t uh, capital T is my uh, might be finite, that's a kind of rich flow developed five times similarities. The, the difficult part is to understand the five times similarities, and there are many results I understand it. And uh, actually, there are since uh, since uh, we introduced this in 2007, there are not there are many uh, many papers, more than a few hundred papers, and uh, and uh, uh, and uh, even uh, even some of uh, I have a uh, a few papers with my collaborator in the top journals about starting this program. And so, so, so a solution for second part of our long-term behavior was, uh, was given. So it's, uh, in this case, uh, the second part is more and less uh, understood. Okay? And of course, you can still uh, find uh, uh, and try to get uh, finer structures, but we, we have some uh, Quite good to understand second part. So main part is about the first part, five times similarities. Okay. So then if a complex dimension two, then the all uh, we know. Okay. So 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 finally, I think my time is up. So maybe I uh, I want to mention uh, some other things uh, people may be interested, or I think it's a new uh, it's uh, something rather new. So, um, I already, we have seen the rich flow has many applications and very, very nice uh, applications, um, but the uh, rich flow cannot do everything. Uh, for example, uh, the rich flow does not necessarily preserve a Hermitian matrix. So this is, uh, uh, without this last line, this is called a Hermitian matrix. And any complex manifold and means a commission matrix, but not necessarily a kind of matrix. So, so, so in this sense, the rich flow is not a very, uh, at least has not a, has not a tool to be useful in studying a commission manifold or studying a complex manifold, which is to not admit a kind of matrix. Okay. So, so bear this in mind. Bearing this in mind, a um, um, number of years ago, I think about 10 years ago, the audio, and uh, Jeff Stewart, he was my postdoc at Princeton at uh, that time. And uh, we introduced a family of new curvature flows on the Hermitian matrix. Okay? So this is uh, 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 basically for following form. So this is uh, uh, G is a Hermitian matrix. And S is a, a so-called rich curvature of uh, chain connections. Uh, you don't need to remember everything. Okay? Uh, just uh, uh, there, is, uh, there, there is some curvature form, uh, uh, curvature form like rich curvature. And uh, QT. So so for 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 this Hermitian metric, and uh, if you want to keep a complex structure, uh, you might have a torsion, unlike uh, Lewis-Civita connections. So T is the torsion. Okay. And the Q, Q hat is a quadratic, quadratic function on the torsion. So, and this flow has a, has a, has a rich, uh, has a finite times uh, solutions and so on. Okay. So the students and I also develop an analytical theory for, for this, uh, uh, for, for these uh, uh, commission flows. Okay. And in particular one is a so-called uh, Closed, uh, so-called pluricloster flow. Okay, 
So then in that case, it's a uh, that's the uh, condition. Okay. And, but anyway, so there are some uh, uh, this uh, there are some like a uh, uh, theorem which we just extend, uh, not a very deep coding. I just extend what 100 and deep for rich flow. So this is a parallel to rich flow. So the one important case was studied by Jeff Schiff and myself is uh, so is uh, when the Q is of this particular form, okay, Q hat, uh, Q Q hat hat has this particular form. So we call this uh, is a is a, a pretty close flow okay? because it's a it's a preserve a pretty close condition. Of, um, so this condition metric with a color form the DD part close. And for commission form manifold, this condition is always true okay, by a result of God shown. So every form dimensional commission manifold means a pretty close the commission matrix. But we do not understand completely every four dimensional commission manifold yet. So this flow may, may give us a way of doing that. Okay. And the flow is not a rich flow, but it's a many estimates need to be done as stable as we did for rich flow. So it turns out in terms of this uh, uh, time side. So in terms of uh, you can reformulate this flow so that it's become a, a flow uh, studied partly by physicists. Okay. So so this is a different way of uh, describing a flow. Okay, the same flow, pretty close flow. So, so bismuth connection is a Hermitian metric. It's a unique connection which preserves a metric and a complex structure and whose torsion is totally anti-symmetric. So namely torsion is a three form. Okay. So, 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 so the, if a P denotes a rich curve to a bismuth connection, then we can show the pretty close flow become like this. So it's very similar to rich flow now. Very similar to rich flow, and uh, and uh, and uh, also you can say um, this flow related to rich flow is a uh, is a uh, um, it's like a couple with a three form. Okay, so first it's rich flow coupled with this form. The H is a quadratic function in the torsion. Okay, and the torsion evolve along a harmonic a harmonic a Hodge operator. Okay, so this is a uh, 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 is a uh, uh, is you can think this is a rich flow coupled with the three form. So, so it's still related to rich flow, but not a rich flow. Okay. So, so more precisely, we prove that this uh, with a job. So, and uh, this, uh, so, uh, okay. So, so I only want to mention uh, uh, now that Jeff Schitz, uh, has made a remarkable progress on this flow. And he also giving, a, uh, he wrote a book and uh, also with uh, uh, some other mathematicians like uh, Fernando and so on. And uh, they, they organized a seminar, a uh, regular seminar at the UC Irvine, to, to, which also available online to uh, talk about this, you know, this uh, commission coverage flow and the probably close flow and so on. Okay. And uh, there's another important case of uh, a commission uh, coverage flow which is uh, you you choose a different uh, uh, different uh, this uh, uh, this uh, quadratic form quadratic form okay and this was uh, uh, first studied by uh, Yuri Utinovsky uh, 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 um, he was my former student at Princeton uh, so he he called the curvature a Hermitian curvature flow. And this flow has a very nice property as a curve as a as a rich flow, a similar to rich flow. So namely it preserves certain positivity of a curvature tensor. Okay, this uh, called the churn curvature tensor. The briefest uh, uh, non-activity is preserved along the flow. And uh, and hopefully one can use this flow to study uh, manifolds which admits a churn connection with a non-negative Briefest curvature, uh, not, okay. So with the briefest, uh, which, sorry, let me say it again. So, so this flow may be able to be used. Uh, may, one may be possible to use this flow by Yuri to study a manifold, permission manifold, 
which admit the chain connection, whose curvature is a non negative in the sense of Griffiths. Okay. So, so he also proved the strong maximum principle analogous to a condition, uh, a lot of Hamilton's one. So, so anyway, so, so, so these uh, uh, new flows, which I introduced with Jeff's is now attract many uh, people and uh, also has uh, potentials to do a generalization things in a more general sense about the uh, other spaces, for example, commission manifolds and so on. So thank you. I think I stop here and uh, Yes, uh, thank you, uh, Professor uh, Gangtian. Before we go on to the question and answer session, we will have a short break with a mu music performance. So, uh, okay. please, uh, from PID. I... Yes. <clears throat> okay, okay, thank, thank, thank you, Professor Gangtian. So, uh, we would like to present you uh, a Nanklung performance. This is uh, okay. tra the traditional music uh, instrument from oh, Indonesia. You. Yeah, and this uh, performance uh, uh, done by uh, ITB students, our students. So, uh, okay, now I try, yep, this moment, oh. Okay, and the title of uh, the song is uh, Fifa La Fida.
Okay. Okay. Beautiful music. Thank you. Oh. Yes, yeah, so students are very creative. I use uh, <laughs> different uh, instruments. Yeah. Um, I did please unmute your microphone. Yeah. So now the student also uh, using apps. Uh, to imitating the voice of the instrument, oh, so okay. you know, <laughs> apps in uh, in the smartphone. Okay, now back to Danny, please. Thank you, my ID. Uh, okay, so uh, we will have a question and answer session for the uh, first question. Uh, it's from our colleague. Dr. Rizal Afghani. Okay, can you read along your question? Yes, I can read Rizal. it. So let me uh, answer the oh. first question. Uh, it's okay? okay. Uh, thanks, I think it's a good question. So in what sense does the first question, in what sense does the constant curvature uh, uh, nice? I think uh, uh, this is, uh, 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 first it's, uh, it's a homogeneous. So you can see, uh, uh, basically it's, uh, let me, I think I, I closed uh, the share. So, so there is this uniformization theorem I stated uh, uh, before. Namely, if you if you know the space has a metric of a constant curvature, then the space is a, is it's the universal cover is a standard. It's your, either uh, either sphere or Euclidean space or hyperbolic space, and this is not true for uh, for in general, it's only true for constant curvature. So, so this is a uh, uh, this is tells us uh, you know this uh, <clears throat> uh, once you have constant curvature and the space is determined completely by its fundamental group. Uh, for example, if uh, you, you you already know the space is uh, is uh, uh, is is simply connected, it has no fundamental group, so then it has to be sphere. So that's uh, uh, and if you if you if uh, if uh, your metric does not have constant curvature, may, you may not get that. Okay. So this theorem is only true for constant curvature, and uh, vice versa. This standard space always admits the metric of constant curvature. Okay. So this is a less than sufficient condition. So second question is uh, does the rich flow change the topology of the manifold? And if a rich flow does not uh, uh, develop singularities is we are not changing topological manifold. We are still on the same manifold, but when the rich flow and cross the finite time singularities, it will change the topology of the manifold. Uh, it may change the topology of manifold. Okay, so the, and the answer to this is yes. And uh, but uh, but what being being geometrically useful or useful to a topology, we do want to understand how this topology change. Uh, so uh, we don't want to like a uh, black box from uh, one, one space to another space. We, we want to know when this change happens when the topology is, uh, is understood. That's what the, exactly what the, what the paramount did in dimension three. And uh, we still uh, have uh, many uh, questions open in the higher dimensions. So, so the question is, can we do rich flows for case of rich orbifold? Yes, uh, for orbifolds, you can do a, uh, in a similar way because uh, best, uh, at least analytically, uh, all the analysis can be carried to a orbifold case. Uh, and you can also try to do a for more general space, like a conic uh, with a manifold with, con with a conic uh, angle. And in that case is uh, more complicated. But if you want to do it for more singular space, uh, I, I think that how, how sing, uh, yeah. what kind of singular space you can still do. I hope I answered your questions. Uh, thank you, Professor Gangtian. Uh, Barizel, does it answer your question? Yeah, or thank you. Comment? Thank you very much. Uh, no, yes. 
Uh, the next question is from uh, Firdaus Nusur. Can you unmute your microphone and put your uh, question, please? Can I ask if that is open? Please, MIC, what is that? Okay, thank you, uh, Mr. Denny, for the time. Uh, I I have two questions okay. for, for, for Tian. The first question, what are the conditions that make geometrization methods inapplicable in certain case? And, and, the second, and the second question, can you explain the advantage of Rehi flow over Hahler Rehi flow? Okay, thank you very much. Uh, can you repeat the question again? It was, uh, I guess connection was uh, not so great. Oh yeah. The first question, what are the conditions that make geometrization methods inapplicable in certain case? Inapplicable. Uh, geometrization method inapplicable in the certain case. What are the conditions? Uh, that's the first question. And then the second question, can you explain the advantage of Ricky flow over Kahner Ricky flow? Thank you very much, bro. Yeah. Uh, yes, I didn't catch the question. So, um, so and what conditions? Um, uh, you want to know what? Um, I guess uh, maybe it's, uh, it's, there's some terminology I didn't get it. Uh, I'm sorry. Can you <laughs> repeat again? <laughs> yes. So if, I which is maybe easier to understand. Is that possible? Uh. uh uh, okay, so probably he asked the condition for the geometrization method, uh, the uh, restriction uh, or something like that. Uh, uh, certain well, geometrization is, uh, you know, in all these cases I described, the, the, I, I believe that geometrization can be realized, um, can always realized, but uh, uh, right now, we in, in like cases like Kenner geometry or some cases, and we still have a uh, difficult to understand the finite time similarities. So this is uh, 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 I don't think that there's an actual condition. Only since we want to have uh, new tools or new ideas to, to understand the finite time similarities. And so that's a uh, uh, that's for for, for example for analytical minimum model program for. For uh, for these uh, last two examples, then it's more a little bit more complicated, and uh, we need uh, uh, we need to understand the better what the geometric uh, what analytic uh, analysis we can do uh, in those cases because uh, uh, the rich flow is is uh, is better and where is better understood, but for other cases it's not. And for dimension three, uh, I think it's essentially understood only. Only you want to know a uh, five times similarity is uh, topologically is understood, and you want to know um, it, what is the model for that. It should be only finite many models for the uh, five times similarities. Uh, that's a. Uh, uh, uh. All right. Thank uh, you. Uh, the okay. second question, probably. Second question, can you? I guess I is. Miss it. Uh, uh, for those, can you yes. repeat uh, the second question? The second question about advantage of Ricky flow, Ricky flow, yes. of Mahler Ricky flow, uh, comparison uh, in comparison in uh, between Ricky flow and Mahler Ricky flow, the advantage of Ricky flow. Uh, what other two flows? You uh, maybe the question is uh, the comparison between the usual or ordinary Ricci flow in the and then the application to the like uh, color manifold setting. Maybe that's the oh, oh, okay. Question. Thank you. That's a good question. Sorry. So, uh, and so the comparison for uh, three dimension is a uh, you know, it's a uh, uh, one dimension is a uh, no, even it's much more complicated than two dimension, but still it's a, uh, it's a, uh, 
it's uh, a singular model are uh, simpler. And in, in Keller case, uh, and things you, you, you want to do is for all the dimensions, there are many possibilities of uh, uh, finite time singularity models. So that is uh, become more complicated. For, for example, what we know is uh, if we're using a HV geometry, knowledge in HV geometry, we know um, uh, for HV for manifolds, these five times singularity are corresponds to flips in the uh, birational HV geometry. But this, uh, uh, we, don't, uh, we don't have uh, uh, this uh, geometric way of, uh, of uh, proving it, pro uh, to prove this yet. So that's uh, uh, so. So I think in the Taylor case, uh, since your 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 goal is to want to classify more spaces and more dimensions, so that's uh, I think technically it's more difficult. Um, on the other hand, and the equation depends on uh, on the one function. So in that sense, a little bit simpler. Okay. Uh... Okay, thank you for the answer. Enough. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Yeah. So, so I think that's a, a, a good question. So it's a, a, also I want to say it's a, you know it's a, um, at least when the pandemic situation improves and uh, in China and policy. So, so some of these people who are uh, doing interesting geometric analysis, special students. Certainly, we we welcome to to to, to consider uh, picking the rest. So now we have a good group of people here. Okay, um, but Rizal, do you have any other question? Please. Yeah, I, I want to follow up uh, the the previous question. Okay. Uh, uh, can you give uh, the simplest example? In the case of uh, the, the Ricci flow, we will change uh, the, the topology. Maybe, for example, n equal to two or uh, n equal to two. It does not do that in dimension three. What you can do, you can think of uh, uh, this, uh, like uh, how do I say this? Is a, a down, a dumbbell. So you have a two. Say, say you have a two sphere which is connected by a thin leg, the thin tube. Right. And uh, the tube is uh, the cross section is S2. And if you want to reach flow, uh, then uh, it might break that, uh, that tube in the middle. So become a two round sphere. So, so that's, uh, that's supposed to be typical way of doing a three dimensional finite time singularity. So, uh, so this is this example, and at least in the, in the uh, assume a certain symmetry. It's not in the compact case. Was, uh, there are some uh, work of uh, um, so Dan Noft uh, or uh, some deep engine. Uh, but anyway, there are some, some uh, if you assume certain uh, rotational symmetries, and you, uh, there are some, uh, some work on that. So, so example. For in a, in a Keller case, the typical example, no simplest example is the following. You can think it's a, it's a blow down. Uh, so there's a process for the blow up in the complex geometry. So you take uh, giving a complex two plan, for example, you take the one point, you will replace that point by all the complex tangents and at that point. So that's like called a blow up of, uh, of, a, uh, of a complex plan. And the rich flow where, if you run a reach flow on a blow up, a reach flow will, at a final time, will contract that, uh, that blow up will again become a C2. So it's a, it's a real reverse that process, a blow up, so called a blow down process. Thank you very much. Um, the next question is from uh, Bayudi, please. Thank you, Papa Denny. Uh, thank you, Professor Gampian, for the very enlightening lectures. Uh -huh. um, if we go back to the history of how people solve the uh, the Poincaré's conjectures, uh, mm -hmm. see the the uh, the very low uh, dimension one one two that's easy. 
and some of the high dimensions, people like Milner, uh, uh, Smale, and, and Fried sulfate, Friedman sulfate in higher dimension. But the terms of the N3, that's difficult uh, until uh, Perelman with the using Ricci flows. Now, if we use that the analytical method of Ricci flows to the to the higher dimension, uh, how it should look like? Thank you. So uh, I, I, at the moment, I don't see. First, I want to see in the high dimensions, uh, which are a bit different from uh, uh, three dimensions and the null, because uh, in high dimensions, there's a, a generalized boundary conjecture that's indeed solved by uh, uh, Smell and uh, Friedman. And uh, they are, but they are this uh, is a topological classification. And like, namely, for example, like uh, on a seven dimension, there are uh, there are twenty eight different dif differentiable structures. Uh, even so, so even the topological you know, as simply connected one is only S four, well, only S seven. But it's uh, but you have may, may have a different uh, uh, complex, uh, a different uh, differentiable structure. So it's still unknown for for four dimension whether S four has a, a unique smooth structure. So we call it smooth boundary conjecture. Uh, while the topological boundary conjecture is, is solved, and this problem distinction does not exist in dimension three. So the rich flow, I think, once it uh, it can be used to solve this, it's supposed to solve for 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 it it, it solve for for smooth things. and. Um, at the moment, I don't see how the Ricci flow can solve a boundary conjecture uh, in a dimension four and up. So, uh, in dimension four, as I mentioned in the in the talk, uh, there's a one possibility is you can use the Ricci flow to understand uh, this uh, uh, so-called A eleventh conjecture. So this, uh, which says uh, for spin. Four manifold simply connect the four spin manifold and uh, second beta number and uh, second signature has some inequalities. Okay, so 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 this uh, in, so in so in in what I want to say in the four dimension, if you run a rich flow, if you get a final matrix, you use the rich flow to understand the structure. You can get some knowledge on the underlying four manifold, but not completely not. Uh, uh, as not as I know can solve a smooth boundary conjecture. Uh, in the high in the higher dimension, dimension five and up, even harder, even harder. Um, unless you have some special structures, like you impose this Keller structure and so on. Without any further conditions, uh, I, I I thought the rich flow can be useful to to solve this uh, generalized boundary conjecture or or have a product series constraint on the underlying four uh, underlying manifolds because the Einstein equation, the one reason is Einstein condition, the original being constant is too weak in the in the high dimension. I hope I answered your okay. question. Yeah. Yes, uh, thank you for your, your answer. Thank you. Another question, Rima? Okay. Oh, okay. Probably I have a basic question in the your slide. It's uh, it's uh, given that the connection between uh, Gaussian curvature and Ricci curvature. Can yes. we uh, do the same, for example, for the mean curvature and Ricci curvature, or oh, so the the question something uh, like that? The mean curvature. No, it's uh, uh, the mean curvature is uh, is for second fundamental form. And uh, and so so if you if your manifold is uh, somehow embedded or in most in some uh, uh, other space you can may have a, a, a second fundamental form then you can the chair of that is mean curvature and uh, of course there's a Gauss equation tells you uh, uh, this uh, second fundamental form the connection between a second fundamental form and the curvature of a, of a, of a in most uh, space. And ambient space, and uh, uh, other than that, or you play around that, uh, you may get some uh, connections like uh, like Yaw and Shun prove uh, this uh, 
uh, use the minimal surface to prove uh, this uh, positive mass theorem and uh, to play around it. And, and uh, so, so it, it's very much dependent on situation. So. Okay, thank you. Um, and from what I read that uh, you, your work and your uh, collaborator work uh, simplify the original proof of the, uh, the, the Poincare conjecture by Perelman, right? Uh, so is it possible if uh, the introduction of another flow or uh, you, you consider the generalization of Ricci flow can uh, simplify more the, uh, the, the proof of the Poincare conjecture or, or even the generalization? And so, so, so I imagine the um, one um, and two flows, uh, for example, in the end with uh, what I did with Jeffs. Actually, I, 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 I also did with Jeffs uh, to to introduce some uh, one one more flow called synthetic coach flow. So we hope this flow can can be used to. To classify like synthetic manifolds and all the Hermitian, all, all these we call the uh, complex manifold, which admit a uh, pretty close matrix. So one particular uh, application in our mind, I, I will say, is a motivation when we introduce this flow, um, was this so-called class seven surfaces. So in the Kodaira classification of a complex surfaces. There is a one class of surface called a class seven surface, which is which, which are not Taylor, but they are they are they are like half surface, uh, like it's a typical one, but uh, uh, but there are some mis still mysterious one. So so this this is a one unknown case in the Kodaira classification of complex surfaces. So we we uh, we we we, uh, we introduce that flow at the First motivation is just try to, to use this flow to 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 to, to classify and to, to study that uh, class seven surface. That's a uh, that's a, uh, one possibility. And uh, 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 talking about if I return to Pangori conjecture, like a uh, uh, moment ago, some other uh, one person asked about uh, whether rich flow can be applied to studying a, a four dimensional Pangori conjecture. Uh, I said no. Uh, but uh, uh, but what's interesting is uh, is uh, uh, actually in my uh, uh, lecture in uh, uh, in Paris 2010. So uh, I mentioned that it's a uh, and for four dimension, if you want to use a flow method or a geometrical method to study a, a smooth boundary conjecture, uh, maybe it's a uh, uh, one should study an anti sectile matrix. So if you find a way of construct anti sectile matrix by a flow or by some uh, this uh, 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 approach, okay, so then you can uh, you have a hope to, to do that. And there's a simple theorem says uh, uh, on the S four, for example, there's no uh, anti sectile metric which is not standard. So that's uh, uh, so if you can find a way of doing that, you can you can have to that purpose. So, so there, uh, so what I want to say, I believe uh, even we introduce a number of interesting flows, I think uh, there are still possible flow, which we don't know yet, which can be used to, to, mm -hmm. to complete what we hope for. Okay. Thank you uh, very much, uh, Professor Gangten. I think, is there any other question or I think the time is, will be for a closing remark. Any other question? Okay, I think uh, that's all for the question and answer. Uh, probably please uh, give applause to Professor Gangdian first before we go on to the uh, closing remark. Thank, thank you. you, thank you, thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, so thank you all have, for, uh, for, for, for this uh, uh, 
for Maybe raising for a good question for listening to my lecture. <laughs> okay. We will have a closing remark by Pak okay. uh, Edi, so, at least. Yeah. Pak Edi. Okay, so thanks again to Professor Kang Tiang for wonderful and enlightening lecture today. So uh, on behalf of the uh, faculty, Yudi, tolong Pak Yudi. Yeah. Okay. Okay, uh, on behalf of the Faculty of Mathematics and Natural Sciences, we would like to present you a certificate uh, signed by our dean and also a token of uh, appreciation. Uh, this is a sketch of uh, your photo made uh, by our students. So let me let me show you uh, uh, the certificate and also the uh, sketch. Okay. Um, Okay, so yeah, so this is the certificate. Oh, nice. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome oh. this moment. And so this is uh, the certificate uh, signed by our uh, our dean. Okay. And, and this is uh, the second one. Oh, this that's is, a... <laughs> uh, the, uh, nice. Thank, thank you notes, uh, uh, the pictures. Uh, make from the uh, computers actually, but uh, uh, done by our, our students. I make my hair a little bit black. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> it's fine, I just joke. I, I, <laughs> I, should, I should ask him to change the, the hair, eh? uh, the, the color <laughs> yeah. of the hair. Eh? <laughs> okay. so, make me look uh, younger, so. <laughs> uh, okay, make it younger. <laughs> yeah, so I will, I will send you these two documents uh thank you. to thank you. you and uh, again thank you very much and also this this uh, uh event actually is uh, also an invitation to you to come to bandung oh thank you thank you uh, yeah. hopefully yeah, i hope uh, to see you in beijing sometime too <laughs> ah, okay okay great <laughs> Okay, so thank thank you, Professor Gang Tiang, and thank you uh, everybody for being here, and also to the committee's members uh, for this event. And see you uh, next uh, December. We we still have uh, one more uh, edition for this year. This is uh, December, and uh, the speaker will be Professor Efim Zelmanov, the field's uh, medalist. Uh, He's of... in China now. So. Zello. Oh yeah. yeah, ah, yeah. okay, yeah. okay, <laughs> great. <laughs> our our best regard to him. <laughs> okay, yeah. he's in the south, not in Beijing. <laughs> in oh, okay, right, right. <laughs> okay, so bye bye.